You told me crypto is the thing I know the least about. One of the things I know the least about. Are you trying to play the humble dude here or? No, I think it does benefit if they just go in with a lot of humility because. Igneous Terranus, the head of public liaison for Mantle. An Ethereum layer two with over $2 billion in total value lock. Previously, the head of communications at Bybit. I've been experimenting a lot with mid journey. I find it just fascinating. Like to explain why Bitcoin made so much sense to you when you started observing it. How does a society function when you look at kind of like what are the civilizations that did really well in the past? It was the civilizations that traded. Like how hard is it to sponsor a Formula One team? So Red Bull has been a very successful team before the current kind of like Max Verstappen dominance. They won four world championships back to back with Vettel. Red Bull Racing, the Formula One team, is the subsidiary of the marketing department of a fizzy drinks company. And then they are able to beat luxury cars, <laughs> premium brands that have been making great cars for decades. So what's your big brain take on meme coins? If there's one thing that is even more scarce resource than money in this market is actually the amount of attention span. When you're able to have this powerful tool that is meme coin that is able to capture people's imagination and bring them in, then a portion of those people will stay for the technology. Mental inherited the large treasury from, from BitDAO, more than three billions now. Mental has 270,000 ETH equivalents and hundreds of millions of stable coins, making it the single largest on-chain treasury, even bigger than Ethereum itself. Take me through the short version of the Mental story. Uh, the first kind of incarnation of, of Mental was called Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a short moment to introduce our partner, Mento, who helps us make this show possible. Mento was created to hyperscale the Ethereum network with what we call a layer two that helps users like you and me transact much faster and at a fraction of the cost of the Ethereum network. Mento has over $2 billion in total value locked, has a mega treasury of $3.7 billion in Bitcoin, ETH, and stablecoins, and has the largest eco fund of the industry with more than $200 million to invest into new projects that want to join the Mental ecosystem. And that's not it. Mental recently launched their Mental Reward Station, which enables you to access some of the absolute best pre sales deals in the industry by locking some MNT tokens. For example, Mental just partnered with Athena Labs, one of the absolutely most hyped projects in the industry, to airdrop 2.5 billion INA points to the MNT stakers. The airdrop was worth more than $3.6 million as pre market value before INA token listing and had huge potential. If you want to get access to the absolute best deal out there, get yourself some MNT tokens and lock them on the Mental Reward Station by following the link down below in the description. It's easy to join and you can unlock your tokens at any time. The team behind Mental are extremely smart people who are personally trusted with some of my money and who I personally know outside of crypto. We actually had Ignatius Ternus and Jordi Alexander on this podcast who both are key figures in the Mental ecosystem. So I invite you to watch these two very candid and in-depth conversations to develop your own opinion. And please, 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 if you enjoy this show, hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section and subscribe to this channel. The more subscribers, the better the guests. Thank you so much for your help. And now on to today's episode. You told me that people call you the walking encyclopedia, right? Sometimes, yeah. You know a lot of things and you have a interesting story between Formula One and crypto, right? Because the crypto is the reason why we're here today. Yeah. Do you want to tell us who you are yep. and how you brought crypto onto Formula One or Formula One into crypto? Yeah. So uh, my name is Ignis Terenus. I'm now the uh, public liaison for Mento. Uh, in my uh, previous employment, I was uh, head of uh, communications at Bybit. I also dabbed in uh, sponsorship deals and some regulatory work. And uh, uh, yeah, it was in, in 2021, we actually saw the uh, opportunity to, to have uh, Bybit on the rebel racing car. And uh, it took like months of, of, of negotiation and, and back and forth. But uh, yeah, we were uh, extremely uh, gratified to see the 
brilliant uh bright color of of, of baby logo on the winning formula car formula one car for the last uh, uh two and a half seasons in a row uh so especially last season uh this season actually rebel won two for two and, and it was one two uh but uh, uh before that uh last year rebel won every race out uh except for singapore so yeah in terms of like sporting records that's as good as you would get in really any sports mm-hmm. We have some wine on the table. Oh yeah. So we'll we'll start with a cheer. Yes. You know? And so the reason why we have wine today is I mean obviously we both love wine, but mm-hmm. you told me yesterday that there is a Roman saying yeah. with wine. Yes. Uh it's uh, in Vino Veritas. Or in like modern church Latin will be in Vino Veritas. It's uh, in wine truth. In wine truth. Which means that when you drink wine, you tell the truth. Yeah, this is what the ancient Romans believe, and this is something that I um, more or less agree. So yesterday was the 15th of March. Yes. Uh, it's the reason why you were drinking wine yesterday, right? Because uh-huh. it was the second anniversary yes. of you and your wife. Yeah. But it was also the 15th, uh, the 15th of March was also the second, uh, the when Julius Caesar was assassinated. Yes. Why did you choose to get married on the day of <laughs> Julius Caesar assassination? Yeah, uh, it just happens to be one of the days that so like we, we needed to like uh, according to the the, mar- the registry of marriage, there are only several days available. Uh, it was during COVID times, mm. so we looked at it and I was like, oh, fifteenth uh, of March. <laughs> like, what is one one sure way of ensuring I will never forget our anniversary? I'll pick this date. Because you think otherwise you would forget it. <laughs> I won't, but, you know, it's kind of like, you know, like uh, I, I still have all my me- mental faculties, uh, knock on wood, but, you know, who knows? Like in, in 30 years, maybe my memory is not as good. Maybe less if you spend a lot of time in crypto. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're actually fast running your, your, your mental capacity. In Absolutely. Crypto. You're a big brain, obviously. Yeah. But you told me crypto is the thing I know the least about. One of the things I know the least about. So... Are you trying to play the humble dude here or? No, I think, you know, w- one thing that kind of I really, w- we learned from crypto is like, uh, doesn't matter how how m- how much you think you know, like um, when you talk to different groups. So like crypto is, is actually not one industry, but like you have different groups of people working on different things. When you actually, when we actually talk to developers, a lot of times like the, the terminology and, and the, the words they use, we actually need to kind of like, mm. you know, go reach <laughs> on GitHub and, and, and to, to look at things to, to even understand. So I think, yeah, uh, one thing that, even though kind of there's a lot of like big egos in, in crypto, it does mm. actually benefit uh, one immensely if they just go in with a lot of humility because like, you know, there's so much we do not know and so much we can learn from the people that we come into contact with. Yeah, I think humility is definitely a key word here, especially after what happened two, two years ago, right? Mm. I think it put everyone down back on earth and everybody realized that we're not that special, right? We're not that different. and. Um, I mean, I think overall, I mean, it was terrible, obviously, but it's probably a net plus for the industry because you have all the bad actors out, plus you have people who are survivors who are much more humble and Absolutely. realizing that they don't know things, as you say, right? You told me you started to observe uh, Bitcoin in 2010. Yeah. And then you started to actively invest in the space in late 2015. Yeah. What caught your attention at that time and why did you take the leap? Uh, so first of all, I, anytime when there's a, a new uh, kind of like technological announcement, I, I always like just really like to pay uh, pay a lot of attention to it. I've been I've been experimenting a lot with uh, with like the likes of uh, Mid Journey. I find it just fascinating. Like um, ChatGPT, I more or less understand the process. Like you know, the next guessing the next word, and then like like the way I hear it described and the way I see it work, it makes perfect sense. But like for so sort of, maybe maybe I'm not as as graphically kind of like the visually in, uh, 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 in tuned as I am with with words. I find the the ability for like Big Journey and, and Sora to do what they do just fascinating. I'm paying a lot of attention. When sort of like uh, the first uh, um, you know uh, when when Bitcoin came about, you know the the, the white paper, it it really just kind of like puts you into a different way of a uh, different uh, paradigm, different way of thinking. It's like, you know, these are things are always done. You know, you always took for granted that, you know, even since the Roman times, you know, the, the state means the coin. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, just another tangent because I really like to go on tangent. I really like to talk, talk about、uh, Roman stuff. Mint and money, they are actually cognates, as in they actually came from the same word. So, what happened was that the original Roman mint was built at、uh, the, the temple of Juno Moneta. So, Juno is,、uh, is the、uh, Roman version of,、uh, of Hera, of、uh, the Greek pantheon. And it's currently actually. Just behind uh, uh, the, 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 the monument to, to the fatherland in Rome, so the, the great white marble building back, to, back, back of it is, 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 a, is the、uh, city church of Rome and still has the word S- SPQR, Sanitus Populesque Romanus, on it. And that is the original mint. So, moneta actually means to warn, to, to, to,、um, to kind of like uh, uh, warn someone of something. Uh, so, that word actually gave us words like、uh, remonstrate and, and, and monster and so on and so forth. So, like, monster, remonstrate,、uh, even demonstrate, and uh, uh, money and mint, they all are related. They, they are all cognates. It's just kind of、like、a very interesting thing to, to see. You know, you don't actually need、uh, the state and、uh, a government. To actually have that. And you can basically, through the consensus of, of mathematics, which is, you know, a lot purer than, you know, putting trust in, in other humans and in, in other agents who have, you know, different incentives, different, different wishes. Whereas if you kind of just rely on pure mathematics and encryption, it actually removes the human out of the equation that is, you know,、uh, the foundation of this、uh, money value system. If- If you, look back at, if you look back at history, maybe that would be an interesting one. What's been done for hundreds, if not thousands of years, is the same as what is being done now, right? You have a, whatever central bank or government or whatever equivalent was it in the past, who are basically、uh, emitting debt and printing money to finance. Now it's wars and economic、yep. crises. Before it was probably more wars and growth. Maybe you want to go a bit into that. Maybe you, ha- maybe you have a few examples, right? Because you like to talk about the past to explain why Bitcoin made so much sense, or actually, let's say, potentially made sense to you when you started observing it. Yeah,、uh, just like throughout history, like, you know, the, the, the power of,、uh, of, 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 of money. Like, so, how, how does a society function? You need trade. Like, you know, when people talk about civilization, one of the, one of the cornerstones of civilization is actually coinage and, and trade. And when you look at kind of like what are the uh, uh, civilizations that, made, that did really well in the, in the past, it was the civilizations that traded.、Um, because when you actually kind of like you only have things that you grow by yourself, like, it's, it's always a limited market. And you know, there were days during, during the,、uh, the, the, the great age of seafaring where you had the Dutch、uh, and the, the, the Portuguese, the, the Spanish, they were uh, chartering uh, you know,、uh, uh, Amada all across the world.、Uh, they could kind of ship、uh, the spices back in Indonesia and then sell it、uh, per ounce at a greater price point than gold. Because trade is what makes、uh, you know, society flourish and then change of ideas and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah,、uh, since, since time immemorial,、like, uh, the state has really tried to control. Like, they either tax or they, they decide you, know, you, need to be, you need to get、uh, a license or you need to kind of enter into a guild that is, that is officially approved or you need to kind of pay taxes. Like, but back then, like, taxes were actually pretty small. When you consider、um, nowadays, like,、uh, the, the income tax is like 30% in a lot of places, and then you know,、uh, even corporate tax at such a high price point. Uh, like famously, the, the, the founding fathers of the United States they started a revolution because there was、uh, taxation without representation. How, what's the percentage do you think they were taxed back then? They were taxed at less than 3%.、Mm. 3%, they were willing to start a, a, a revolution with, with bloodshed. Nowadays, like, it's even more. But the funny thing is, like, government doesn't actually rely on tax to fund, they, they say they do, but they, actually, they can actually just print more money. It's just a way to control. Exactly. So that's why I, that's why I hear that actually, I mean, obviously it's in the theory of crypto, right? But I've heard that, I don't remember who was saying that, but like a big authority was actually saying, hey, some people should ask the question if you're able to print money when there is an issue, why are we paying taxes, right? And the actual answer to that is exactly what you just said. It's not. The taxes are actually not, it's just an excuse, right? Yeah, it's, it's exertion <laughs> of control. <laughs> what, is, what is one 
one way to exert itself to be omnipresent in the daily life. Because like, you know, doesn't matter, like we, we can be very self-sufficient, but no, no, no person is an island. Like, just like there was this book about uh, so-called uh, uh, A Thousand Things. So th this guy, he just like, one day he woke up, he decided, oh, you know, how, how many hands does, like, does, does it take actually to, to, to have my morning coffee? And then he was kind of retrace the, the entire kind of, like, you know, from, from, from you know, uh, the logistics, the, uh, the, the, the coffee shop, all the way to where it was planted in Brazil. Like, how many, how many steps actually does it take to get this simple, um, you know, cup of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of espresso, it actually takes more than a thousand people. Um, so, you know, uh, we cannot live independently the way kind of, I saw, you know, that, uh, Thoreau talk about kind of, he lives in Warden. Um, but like all that includes transaction. What the state wants is to be in each and every, uh, transaction. That's what like a lot of like CBDC is trying to do. Like they can actually monitor every transaction. They can ensure, uh, you know, they like the, the state or like uh, powers of government can transmute, can can enter into, you know, every interaction, every transaction that we have with with other members of the society. And if someone just asks you why does the state need or want to be in every transaction, what's your answer? Control. Um, I mean, it's but for, why does the government need to control? For better, what happens for, if there is less control? Well, like, what what does the government exist to do? Like, so um, we tend to think, oh, you know, countries, nation states has been the case all 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 this way. It only has four hundred years of history, and a lot of things like we we take as like things that had been existing for the longest time. It actually has a very short period of history. Um, but you know, even even for crypto, like you know, in order to create a consensus, like you know, you have the mathematical, you have the technological consensus that is achieved through encryption. But you know, for a group of people to to huddle around, especially for a group of people to huddle around a meme coin, you need to have some sort of like a cultural reference and, and story that people buy into, because that is how you connect people across uh, space and time and how you are able to kind of have a, a community. Uh, because like, you know, uh, we social animals, uh, you know, to, to be able to do something that is greater than, than the individual, we need to have some way to uh, uh, either uh, collaborate or conspire with people. Uh, what, uh, talking a lot. Uh, another example I like to throw around is like, it just imagine kind of one person, one human is trying to fight one chimpanzee or one gorilla. Gorilla wins, hands down. 10 humans fight 10 gorillas, 10 gorillas will still win. But when you think 100 people fight 100 gorillas, who will win? I think most of us will agree with 100 people gonna win. But how do we win if we're not at like at equal strength? It's because we are able to, you know, collaborate. We are able to work together in a way that is dependent on you know, we buy into a common myth, a common narrative that we more or less can all agree on. Amazing. Um, so back to crypto. So you, you started to invest, right? 2015, 16? Yeah. And one of your first, or probably your first work, working experience in crypto because you decided to go all in, right? Mm. Was uh, Bybit. Yeah. Became head of communication, yes. right? At Bybit. We had been on the podcast. Oh. Why do you think Bybit became so huge? Um, it's just uh, uh, it's it's just very well run, uh, and uh, you know it, it has a very good product. Uh, so like, um, doesn't matter how you you think of kind of like uh, different uh, exchanges like. Um, for retail, for, for, of course, different people have different needs. But when you actually talk to seasoned traders who are actually like trading series size and, you know, uh, high frequency traders or like, you know, uh, all of them, they would say buy this product ever since the beginning is the best. Like uh, even even when FTX was was really kind of like, uh, under, under ascendancy, like everyone just really didn't like the product because like they famously only had six engineers. Mm. Bybit has like 600, if not 800 nowadays engineers. And the product is just so well uh, produced. And, you know, um, when, when you have kind of like a core um, uh, of seasoned traders on it, it kind of like either through uh, word of mouth or just kind of like, you know, because they are already producing, like they're already generating so much liquidity, it just makes it a lot easier for everyone else to trade on it. So it really is kind of like, um, it does a lot of things right, but the core of it is, um, you know, the the product is really good and the risk engine, everything is just done with a lot of thought and deliberate uh, uh, decisions. Yeah, you also said during the podcast that 
you know, as you said that you were the per, the, the first ones to to go into sport mm -hmm. uh, sponsorship. Yeah. Uh, you guys also were the first one to make it much easier for, you know, affiliate marketers, basically mm -hmm. for the influencers to understand exactly kind of building a CRM yeah. uh, and a, a dashboard for, yes. for the, the influencers. And that is, that actually made a massive difference and that everyone copied by bit actually on that one. And that helped a lot the growth because it, it's really interesting. Like, I mean, you are a very technical person, obviously. Ben is a, he's a sales guy, right? And he's the guy who's going to say, I mean, he's also very, very technical, but he's like a salesperson. He's the guy who's going to say, he actually says uh, in the trailer uh, of the podcast that the engineers were telling him, hey, we should, uh, we should add a second pair, ETH in, or, or a third pair, like BitMEX is doing. And he was saying, guys, no one gives a fuck about the second and the mm -hmm. third pair because no one knows we exist. Yeah. So we need to get out there and do everything we can so everybody knows we exist and they've been killing it with the affiliate marketing program and and what you guys did in uh, sport sponsorship. Yeah. Oh, but Ben is a very shrewd person. Like he he sometimes he acts very cleverly, especially like he he's 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 a very uh you know uh He's a mag magnetic person. He has a magnetic, charming personality. But like when he is actually making business decision, it, it's it's always very, very on on, on the point. Um, yeah, like sports sponsorship. It's kind of like exactly what you said. Like in the beginning, you really want to concentrate your offering because like you want you want to punch through. There's so much noise that like if you kind of like just start. Oh, it's like you know we try to sell something on the internet. Oh, I'm here for everyone. You actually won't get that far. Whereas if you kind of like just focus on a, a very small niche, but internet kind of like amplifies that you're able to find all those people that you wouldn't be otherwise able to find um, without the internet and suddenly you can find like all those small reddit uh, uh, subreddits but like they, they they only they have a very very niche topic but they have like uh, tens of thousands of uh, passionate uh, people around the world uh, same thing with that when you start you actually really want to make your uh, product offering really really concentrated really really uh, laser focused but um once there's a level of success, you obviously want to appeal to more and more like-minded people. And sports is, is a great, great way of doing it, especially kind of, you know, um, uh, people who are into Formula One. Formula One is, is a high octane, uh, high risk, high reward, uh, you know, uh, uh, sport. And a lot of people who, who enjoy uh, Formula One, they are actually a little bit of risk takers. They, they, they enjoy the, uh, the adrenaline that comes with, you know, being validated on, on their choices. So it feels a very natural uh, match. And I remember like in the early days, we were even talking about it almost feels like uh, Rebel Racing and Bybit are the same brand, but born into two different bodies. Um, in a way, it was, it was just a really good match. Uh, same for like all the other uh, sponsorships that Bybit did uh, throughout the years. Um, you know, uh, Borussia Dortmund, like uh, this uh, German uh, Bundesliga football club, they just uh, recently uh, entered uh, the, the quarterfinals of uh, of uh, uh, Champions League again. So congratulations to Borussia Dortmund. Uh, they they share the same brand color as Bybit, so it felt like a, a really good match as well. I remember Ben was like 15 minutes before the before the before the announcement, he was like, Ah, what's a what's a football team that that shares color and then a lot of people actually said Borussia Dortmund and then he just said oh yeah Baby is becoming a, a partner of Borussia Dortmund everyone's astounded they were like how did you do the, the deal in 15 minutes obviously it was down before but you know uh, Ben is able to he, he's able to kind of always tell a story that's more interesting sometimes than, than facts but you know you kind of like just find the way he, he say things um, uh, a better story than otherwise talking about story this is probably an interesting story on the you know, landing a, sponsor, a sponsorship with Red, Red Bull Formula One, because obviously in hindsight, you can say, listen, we're mega exchange. We have the means, but it's probably not enough, right? Like how hard is it to sponsor a Formula One team? Yeah, uh, I think in a way because there are other people who did it before. Like FTX obviously had a, a sponsorship with uh, with uh, uh, Mercedes already, so like it made uh, it moved over to window a little bit. So it became like something that people would even consider. Like, um, but yeah, it was it was very difficult. So Red Bull has been a very successful team. They uh, before the current kind of like Max Verstappen dominance, they won four world championships back to back with Vettel, and uh, uh, they are one of the most successful brands. And when you think about it, they actually kind of like the the, the perfect kind of like they embody the crypto spirit so well because rebel racing the formula one team um is the subsidiary of the marketing department of a fizzy drinks company yeah. <laughs> and then they are able to beat 
Ferrari. It's crazy. Mercedes, yeah. McLaren, luxury cars, <laughs> premium car brands that have been making great cars for uh, racetrack and passengers for decades. And then this upstarter, uh, you know, subsidiary of, of, of a marketing department uh, just said, I'm going to race cars. And then they are, you know, almost, ex- they're, 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 they're the most dominant uh, car uh, on, on the track last year. So it is the biggest middle finger to establishment. It's the same way, you know, uh, of crypto. Crypto is the uh, uh, biggest defiance and, 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 you know, the success of crypto actually validates that the system uh, that we have for, for, for financial, uh, you know, uh, economy, health is rotten and we needed, uh, you know, something that is out out box think out of box thinking the way you know uh, a fizzy drinks company decided oh we're gonna enter into this uh, uh, the, the highest uh, uh, it, of, of elite race uh, uh, car racing and we're gonna uh, make a name for ourselves out of it. How do you think that this was possible? A Is lot it just a question of means. No, uh, it's a, it's a lot of uh, you need to understand uh, kind of like what rebel is, is stand for. Like so, like this this part about crypto and, and, and rebel's similarity. Actually, like I I I didn't even need to think because I did it so many times with the rebel people. Like they they appreciate like and. and to be able to, a lot of times, like I think, you know, um, this 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 is true for any partnership, any any sponsorship, or any kind of like uh, uh, collaboration you enter into. Uh, it's inevitable that because brands are never going to be identical, there's always going to be a di- dilution of, of of the brand messages. So, like uh, especially kind of self respecting brands, they're very careful about that. But what you kind of like try to convince them, especially kind of like, you know, uh, obviously. Now we hope in, in time, Bybit will be as a uh, household name as 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 Rebel, you know. Uh, but of course, like Rebel is the the better known brand. So when the the conversation was uh, was uh, when when sort of we entered the conversation, you need to kind of to to show that how much you appreciate and how much you understand. So like the knowledge about the sport, the knowledge about their thinking, the knowledge about the strategy they they deployed, the knowledge the knowledge about that, actually showing that you did homework and showing you respect what they do is actually very, very um, important for them. Then they know, um, you know, how much you appreciate the sport, how much you appreciate the brand. They know when you when they enter a partnership with you, you're not just going to uh, mess it up with, because, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, I think Mercedes were just very not happy with the fact that they entered into a partnership with FTX because FTX didn't respect them as much as, mm. say, Bybit did, right? Like, um, you know, FTX blew, blew up. Um, it's, it's probably even like not not the, the most not, not most of it because they like the way FTX marketed it was 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 not well done not not really respecting the, the sport in itself. Whereas I think you know a lot of times like uh, when Bybee enters into a partnership or like, you know when Bybee entered into a partnership th- with, with Red Bull, it really comes from a position of understanding and respect and and <laughs> almost kind of like you cherished brand you cherish your partner's brand as much as you do and this is something that we do at mentor as well <laughs> is that uh, like mentor because it's 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 a blockchain so it has lots of dApps built on mentor 180 now every time we enter into a partnership we we are so protective of 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 the branding the messaging of, of a partner sometimes like when we see kind of like a, a third party would would like basically they they mock up some poster we're like oh this is not how they do their logo like because uh, when it's a, a dark background, you want to use the light color logo instead. Or sometimes we would say, you know, because crypto, we like to spell things like uh, creatively. These are capital letters. These are lowercase letters. And we'll say they spell their all their name uh, capital letter. So, um, you know, we would actually step up to, to, to help ensure, you know, our partners are presented in the best light and in the light they want. And I think this level of just kind of like being... Uh, protective of, of 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 the brands that you work with, and and you know you, you feel kind of like that kinship and, and that that ownership, even for for you know people you work with, is something that they deeply appreciate, and uh, and, and it will make the, the partnership really grow uh, from strength to strength uh, across time. Ladies and gentlemen, as you probably know, we are teaming up with Astar Network on this show. Astar Network is a decentralized blockchain platform that aims to bring billions of people into Web3. And the Astar team has a very specific strategy to make this happen, to partner with the biggest conglomerates in Web2 and help them onboard their customers into our world, the Web3 world. If you want to check out for yourself, I invite you to watch the candid podcast I recorded with Sota Watanabe, the founder of Startail Labs and Astar Network. And now on to today's episode. What is mental if you had to explain it to your mother? 
<laughs> like, uh, I'd like for the rest of this conversation, yeah. especially the crypto part, yeah. because we're going to get into a lot of, I'd say, fairly technical. I mean, for you, maybe not, but for most people who are watching, very technical question. Let's try to talk as if we're talking to maybe not your daughter because she's eight months old, right? But let's say she's 10 years old, or yeah. let's say you talk to your mother, like everything should be understandable as much as possible by people who don't really understand these things. Uh, Mento is a way to scale Ethereum. Ethereum is the world computer. Uh, so um, this is kind of like the, the, the shortest way uh, of, 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 mm. of saying it. And, and then I think, you know, a lot of times like you don't actually want to give an answer that actually explains everything, but like you kind of like put the, the broad strokes on and then encourage them to ask more questions, I think is the best way. Cause like, it, it, that that is how you know you activate their their their, their curiosity. So um, uh, we really think you know of course like Solana is going very strong now, but uh, uh, Ethereum more or less uh, has established such a dominant position going forward. It is the world computer. It is where uh, the the premium uh, um, smart contracts gonna run. Uh, you know for 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 retail for DGN for a lot of that when people who want to hunt for a hundred x a thousand x. Uh, uh, meme coins, Solana is, is is a good choice, but especially with uh, the Dankun um, upgrade that happened uh, 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 two days ago, three days now, thirteenth, uh, mm. uh, two days, three days, depending on what time zone you are. Uh, now layer twos are so cheap. Layer two is actually cheaper than than Solana itself. So it really just opens so much opportunity for the Ethereum uh, ecosystem and. Because you know this upgrade actually benefits Layer Two more than Ethereum, you can say this is the moment where uh, Layer Twos have truly come to age, and they are a part of Ethereum. So you know, Mento is our uh, vision of how to hyperscale uh, Ethereum to help uh, mass adoption. So uh, you know, uh, for it to truly be the internet computer that everyone uses for every transaction, you obviously still need to increase the throughput. Uh, and you know, on layer two, when you make the transactions, make the execution off chain, and then only batch them up uh, at the end of of of, uh, of a block and publish it back onto L1. That way, you can really uh, grow uh, uh, just like exponentially, and then really still because it's built on Ethereum, ensure the security is is not compromised. Uh, yeah, because we're drinking. It's like uh, you know, um, instead of paying for every drink. You get a tap, and then you pay at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the night uh, of, of a drinking session. So this is how, kind of like, mm. uh, in in the simplest terms, how a roll up layer two does uh, when it comes to uh, batching transactions. Take me through the short version of the mental story, because it didn't start as mental, right? Yeah, um, and maybe the link between Bybit, BitDAO, yeah, and mental. Yeah. So people understand that this project has a really solid background and that there is a reason why it's starting to become really big today and it is in a big momentum. Yeah. So uh, the the first kind of incarnation of, of Mento was called BitDAO. BitDAO is a decentralized autonomous organization and at its height, it was the largest in the world in terms of um, its treasury. Uh, it was uh, started by uh, a lot of us uh, who actually worked at Bybit. Uh, we, we were moon, moonlighting, moonshining uh, on the side project and received a lot of support. So Bybit actually contributed more than a billion dollars worth of, uh, worth of uh, 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 ETH and a stable coin to, to, to BitDAO because it really believed the vision. Uh, so BitDAO um, is, is a vision to kind of like really create uh, changes in the Web3 world and to really kind of like accelerate mass adoption uh, through a non-corporate structure, and a lot of like early uh, uh, partners of BitDAO actually bought into the idea. Uh, Peter Thiel uh, of, of PayPal fame and uh, uh, founders found Pantera, Spartan, so on and so forth. Dragonfly, of course. So uh, BitDAO managed to raise you know uh, hundreds of million funds, and then received uh, the largest from from Bybit. Became the largest DAO and was investing in um, all sorts of uh, uh, cornerstone, keystone. Uh, infrastructure that will become important as mass adoption comes but like um, so it was a fund initially yeah it was it was it was it basically acted as a investment DAO mm, okay. uh, even though it kind of it had like much loftier ambitions but like in in, in manifestation it manifested as as investment DAO but we kind of felt like um, for 
the everyday user for the everyday uh, like uh, uh, Web3 aficionado, like uh, just someone who, who is interested, you're never going to capture people's imagination with investment though. Like, you know, it's great, but, mm. you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, who is excited about all the VCs, right? Absolutely. Like, so we needed to make something that we are actively contributing instead of just kind of like signing checks. And looking at kind of like the, the lessons we learned from the last cycle, we really thought, you know, uh, Ethereum has more or less uh, established its dominant position. So we want to be Ethereum aligned as much as possible. But Ethereum has its problems. So like all the alternative layer ones, they are right in. At least in one thing is that Ethereum has bottlenecks then that prevents it from better scalability. So we were trying to do something that is has the same or uh, comparable level of security as Ethereum, but really allows it to hyperscale. And, um, you know, with, with blobs nowadays, you know, you, you have a lot of cost savings, but back when we didn't have it, we thought, what is a very good way of doing it is actually we got, uh, you know, acquainted with people from Eigenlayer. So Eigenlayer is capturing a lot of people's attention. It's it's the premium restaking layer, the largest, the latest round they, they raised from A16Z, one of the most recognized brand in, in uh, crypto VC funding. They raised 100 million from A16Z alone in the last round. They didn't even need money from anyone else. And uh, uh, they had this product called EigenDA that is a data availability layer. So when you kind of like... Uh, 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 have transactions on layer two. Uh, layer two cost is actually really low. That the vast majority of the cost, even for layer, uh, even for layer two Ethereum uh, scaling solution, it's actually when you publish data and when you kind of retrieve data back on Ethereum layer one, because you're still competing with all the other transactions. One who wants to be uh, fit in the block, and uh, Eigen DA does it in its in its own DA layer, which really allows a significant uh, cost reduction. But because Eigen DA is backed by Eigen Layers restaking, so like you actually renting security from Ethereum stakers themselves, really allows you to bootstrap uh, security, bootstrap liquidity. It's like uh, you know liquidity on demand. Like you know when you need a a, a, a car, you you, go, you get ride sharing or like uh, Netflix. It's uh, Uber and Netflix or Grab because we're in Singapore for for uh, liquidity and security. Um, and yeah, uh, Mento is also interesting in the sense that it is uh, the first modular L2. So uh, monolithic chains like Ethereum, like uh, Ethereum, especially before the merge and before the blobs, everything, uh, execution, uh, data availability, consensus finality on, down in the same layer using the same block. So this is good when there's not much traffic, but when there's a surging in activity, you see like gas price go to hundreds of dollars. And same for uh, Solana, it's all monolithic. Whereas we actually kind of like build it in a Lego kind of way. We take the best of everyone. So execution on Mento is, on, is down on Mento. Uh, consensus finality is down on Ethereum. And then data availability is down on Mento DA powered by Eigen DA technology. We're able to take the best of everything. And what it further does is when we need to change the code, when we need to have an upgrade, like we did yesterday, we had uh, the Mento V2 Technonic uh, upgrade. We only need to change the parts we need to change. Everything else can stay the same. So uh, for Ethereum, like they've been working on this Dancoin upgrade for two years and took months of planning, months of scheduling. They need to test down multiple test nets to make sure because uh, a monolithic chain is like a wood block. You, you, in order to kind of print something new, a, a new book, you need to carve a new wood block. You can't just smirch some words off. Whereas a modular chain is more like a um, movable type, like Gutenberg. Uh, Bible, you can just rearrange the letters and then you can just print it, which makes it a lot more agile. We are able to adopt, uh, ad adapt to the latest technology. We are able to adopt, uh, you know, the latest advancements and we're able to kind of like, you know, make things, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, have the latest innovations in, in, in a very agile manner. Um, and yeah, another another thing that Mento is is excelled at is because Mento inherited a, a, the, the the large um, treasury from from Bitdal. I think it's more than three billions now, uh, and it's also the, the treasury. The treasury, so it's, itself is more than three billion. Yeah, uh, it, it's the single largest on-chain treasury when you discount native tokens. So there are some other treasuries that claim to be bigger, but ninety-nine percent of that treasury is denominated in their own token. Mm. Uh, but for Mento. It has two hundred and seventy thousand ETH or ETH equivalents, and hundreds of millions, like uh, three, four hundred millions of uh, of stable coins, making it the single largest on-chain treasury, uh, even bigger than Ethereum itself. 
So, you know, of course we're going to have, we're just starting the bull market. There's, you know, there's going to be some dips here and there. So uh, everyone's is going to be doing great, but you know, inevitably like this is just being real. Um, a mm. bear market will come eventually. And you know, what you're able to kind of like consolidate and, and build, uh, when the bear market come is 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 hugely important when you have uh, a large treasury at its back and mental has a larger treasury than basically all the other l2s combined mm. so guys you you guys are rapidly gaining momentum right uh because you have, you have one key product yeah so uh Aside from the the core, the first core product that's Mental Network, we also have uh, this uh, Ethereum staking protocol called Mental LSP, and the, the token is METH or Meth, uh, which is a great name. You know, uh, uh, we've been just uh, totally abusing Breaking Bad uh, memes, like uh, you know, I am the danger, and uh, say my name, so on and so forth. Um, so Mental Staking ETH was launched only in December, so it's like less than three months, and it's already the fourth largest. Uh, already kind of like um, uh, breathing to the neck of Binance uh, staked uh, ETH, already leapfrogged Frax and uh, and Coinbase months uh, uh, in the in the past. I think like within like first three weeks, we already uh, leap leapfrogged uh, Coinbase staked ETH, and uh, uh, yeah, even Rocket Pool, the second largest staking uh, protocol, is not that far. So currently, we're actually limiting the the cap because um, our mental uh, uh, stake. Uh, mental liquid staking protocol is actually giving uh, uh, users uh, double the uh, the market yield. So like the the average market yield for Ethereum staking protocol is about three six uh, three point six, and Mental is offering about seven point two. So uh, yeah, the 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 level of enthusiasm is is just great. Uh, it's uh, people really love the meth. The reason. It... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The reason of the addiction of people, right? Yeah. Because we can say it. Um, double the, the yield is an incentive mechanism yeah. purely, yeah. or you guys are able with other ways to generate a better yield than the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we, like, uh, we, we have three... People love the myth. Yeah, we have 300... Uh, we, we have we have 270,000 ETH in, in the treasury. So we're actually staking our own ETH. Yeah, and then we're just uh, giving that uh, the, the reward from those ETH to the users. Yeah. So it is only something that someone who, who has already like a large ETH holding is able to do. Uh, of course, like um, that is, is the biggest kind of like a, a gateway drug into meth uh, but uh, when people actually sort of like uh, start to use it they really feel kind of like uh, the the ui the ux is just so smooth it's uh it's also because like we had the benefit of hindsight building uh only you know uh after the first generation of uh, liquid staking protocols are done and now there's a lot less friction so you know remember the early days of, of lido and rocket pool you can't even withdraw because uh, uh the merge hasn't happened so when you actually put ETH into uh you know the the the, the beacon chain you can actually withdraw after afterwards and then um for us um it was started after the merge and then after kind of like all the kinks are, are ironed out so it's it's a new generation a modern design re really kind of like takes advantage of uh, of all the new technological advancements and uh weeding away the lessons we learned from kind of like the previous generation so 600,000 staked eth right yeah which is about 2.4 billion yeah in total value locked if the main way to get people addicted to mental is incentives how do you make this grow and sustainable at the same time um, what's the plan there yeah to you know you said you're just on the neck of binance how do you yeah. over overtake binance and i don't know who is the second one uh, rocket pool a uh, rocket pool okay what's the plan there so so first of all like, of course like you want to uh use some kind of like uh, uh incentive to to lure people in like or to to uh, to to attract people but once they kind of like come and really like the product itself um it makes it a lot easier like you know what happened with kind of like uh, Uber and Grab in, mm. in in the early days uh there 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 was like a fierce competition like they needed to kind of like give uh uh, uh no incentives but uh they subsidized the, the cost nowadays like you know ride sharing it's it's like in singapore it's all grab like they, they're not giving those incentives anymore uh we will you know try to give it as long as possible the, the benefit of, of 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 having a large treasury is 
and then the whole the whole thing like the whole kind of like the mental ecosystem is built with uh, this uh, this word is like a, I think a lot of like Silicon Valley people like to use this being supple. So um, we we see like a lot of others like they they're building kind of like at a breakneck space and, and uh, uh, speed and so on and so forth, but they're really fragile. It's like you know uh, if if anything. Any of the variable changes, it makes it very, very difficult for them to, uh, for for the enterprise to make sense financially and, and economically. But for mental, we have very, very, um, how to sound less crass than deep pockets. Uh, we have large financial yeah. cushion to really allow us to uh, make those decisions and then to be less absorbed by, you know, uh, the, the the whims and the, the momentary kind of fads, and we're able to kind of build more deliberately, think in much more longer terms like uh, you know uh there was this r- recent kind of meme from from dune and, and uh uh they were like uh, we make our plans in, in centuries uh yeah something like that not necessarily centuries but definitely like we we have multiple bull bear circles uh cycles of, of plans so right now we're drowning in a sea of layer ones and layer two what does the crypto world look like in five years well, consolidation, evidently, it's it's for every technology. Um, we like, I think in a way, like having a lot of layer twos. I just saw like two layer twos announced their launch, or like announced announced kind of like planned launch after a successful uh, uh, fundraising round. And one is called Zero, another is called Ten. So like maybe you're gonna have like uh, other other different and like they 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 just kind of even too lazy to name to have an interesting name. They're just gonna name them after numbers. Um, but yeah, you have all of them uh, because it's actually not bad. It's actually a social proof that we're on, on the right track. This is something that have people's imagination. And this is something that is going to be inter- integral part of, of Ethereum. As I said, like layer two is our Ethereum now. Mm. But, uh, you know, uh, you, you need to have enough suppleness to go through a bull bear cycle. Uh, when... Hopefully, it takes a long time for for the bull run to 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 have its full run. But when bear finally comes, who is in a good position financially? Who has made uh you know good decisions to ensure that the community that they have acquired sticks around, even though you know a lot of the incentive is going to be gone, and they still have enough runway to both uh sustain kind of like the uh on the on the engineering side and on the kind of like marketing uh community building side. Um, you know, a lot of times when you, when both of them share the same budget, it becomes a very difficult decision to make because like you still need to retain onto your users, but then are you just going to kind of like cut the, uh, engineering cost? Uh, mental has always kind of separated those budgets and then mental has always, you know, have the benefit of, um, you know, a lot, a lot of support from our ecosystem partners, a lot of support from, you know, Bybit still gives us kind of a lot of like technological support. They would like look at our code, like they would have, they would do help with uh, a round of, uh, of, of audit. And uh, we, we receive a lot of support from like the likes of Eigenlayer and so on and so forth. And we also, uh, you know, uh, repay those, uh, those uh, um, help handsomely. So EigenDA, uh, Mentor actually contributed a lot of the code base. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like making good decisions, making uh, sound financial judgment, also building solid uh, 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 partnerships. Like a lot of times, like the greatest asset you have is not necessarily, you know, the money in, in the bank, but rather um, the people you come into contact with. We really just view the likes of uh, um, Eigenlayer and, and, and Bybit with such esteem and, and respect and really just like appreciate them so much. Um a lot of like great uh, dApps that deploy on mental like Ando Finance, they have this uh, uh, tokenized US treasury bills. Uh, so uh, mm-hmm. like acts as a stable coin, but in, instead of kind of say the likes of Circle or Tether, they keep the the yield from the uh, the central bank. Uh, Ando actually gives that yield to uh, user holders. And we, we we are the first, one of the first chains that actually the, the first chain outside of Ethereum to, to have Ando uh, finance USDY and then um, um, Mento has a, a Mento exclusive version called MUSD. And, you know, we're working with Athena. Athena is this uh, 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 sort of a stable coin built out of uh, uh, futures uh, positions on, on centralized exchanges because the, the, the bull market, there's so much money to be paid to, to be in a short position. So they can actually kind of give people really, really good returns uh, by holding this uh, uh, synthetic uh, uh, US dollar called USDE. 
uh, like 20% APY, that's completely different than sort of like how Terra uh, Luna did it because they just kind of like were giving people money from their treasury. Whereas Athena is actually making money mm. um, on uh, by by earning those uh, 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 funding uh, fees, founding fees mm. on central exchanges uh, and while still able to give that yield to users. You said before that what made you guys decide to kind of transform BitDAO into Mental and become a, a layer two, yeah. Ethereum layer two, is that your thesis was that the layer ones would fade away and Ethereum basically consolidated as the main layer one. Yeah. Why are so many layer ones still launching? And maybe we can put that, I mean, there's probably a, you know, you, you mentioned before for the layer two, hey, it's a good, uh, it's a good sign because it means that people are very creative, but I see also by being not, let's say not too naive and we get the financial aspect of launching tokens for VCs, right? That is extremely profitable. Mm -hmm. What's your take on like the launch of all these layer ones? And I actually interview a lot of them, right? Yeah. No, I won't say like, I think all of them are going to fade away. It's just kind of like, uh, they need to kind of really find a niche to occupy. And it doesn't actually matter that you, you don't become the, 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 the dominant kind of like smart contract platform. Uh, as I said, like the internet is so great that the world is so big that if you just occupy a very small niche and then you have very passionate users, it's actually enough. But in terms of being the sort of like almost a commonwealth of uh, of of uh, of of the, the internet computer, we really do not see anyone challenging Ethereum's supremacy. At, at least, kind of as as the current, like we just project, we just extenuate, we extend the current kind of like trajectory out to the next bull bull cycle. We still think Ethereum is going to be dominant. Uh, you know, is is Solana doing great? It is absolutely. Uh, Avalanche is doing great, mm -hmm. but is it going to be? Replacing Ethereum is going to be the Ethereum killer. No, it's not going to be that uh, because it's it's now um, catering to a slightly different audience. Um, yeah, uh, people are going to try new things. It, you know, it, it, one one thing about like human endeavor or really any endeavor, even like the endeavor of of of, of uh, you know evolution, the, the unthinking evolution, but like. It throws all the possible ways at it. Like when you look at kind of the the, the fossil, fossils, there are so many interesting choices made. Like to to think, like you know, everything living on Earth at this moment actually share a common ancestors all the way back, right? Like we share a common ancestor with the lunch we ate, because the only thing that we we eat that has has never been alive is salt. Everything else has been alive at some point in time, and how many choices have been made like like we look nothing alike say like a watermelon even though we share like a, a lot of our dna with with even a watermelon or like a banana like we share 90 percent of our dna with with a with a with a, with a rat hmm. we share 98.2 percent of our dna with a gorilla like uh, people like to talk about you know how different cultures are different when all that difference and all the things we are able to achieve with you know all the monuments on the cathedrals sending a man to the moon creating, you know, blockchain is just in that 1.8%. Mm. Um, you know, like, we should never kind of like to, to be quick, too quick to judge other people's choices. And then, you know, they are just throwing different solutions at a problem and see, you know, what sticks. And I think, you know, to have more uh, project launching is actually a positive sign of people uh, seeing opportunity in the space. And then, you know, their enthusiasm will bring more people in because there's nothing so magnetic mm -hmm. and 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 so uh uh attractive than uh passionate people at work absolutely you talked about solana obviously the other layer one that's starting to be that to pick up i mean actually it's kind of like booming right now especially because of the meme coin mania right and you said hey now with these upgrades layer twos are actually cheaper than solana But the cost is not everything, right? And I, 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 I'm going to challenge a bit the, the layer twos here. Yeah. Because um, that's my job, obviously. And I think as a, 
I understand crypto. I've been in crypto for probably six to seven years, but I'm not a very technical person. I like, and I think I'm like most people. I'm kind of lazy, right? I don't, I don't like hassle. We are a little. So I see some people writing some things on Twitter that actually make sense to me and that I want you to challenge or to, to basically give your own honest take on. And there's two things. The first one is about Solana. Someone saying, I'm now completely normalized to Solana speed and UX. Painful to get back to ETH. It's like when I first got used to ETH and then had to go back to Bitcoin. Or except going back to BTC, the slowness and rawness feels like you're moving gold. With ETH, it's just annoying. Many such cases. So what's your honest take on that? If you have to take, you know, obviously there is, there is good and bad everywhere, right? Maybe you can give us both aspects. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think those, those, those uh, considerations are very valid. Mm. Uh, but I think it also is because the industry is still so new that people are comparing Ethereum and Bitcoin and Solana. In, in 20 years time, if all three are still thriving, they will be doing very different things. It's because we are at such beginning. So like, even though they're making very different choices, it's like you go all the way back to the 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 the, uh, the Jurassic or the, the Cambrian uh, evolution when everything is just starting. Like nowadays you wouldn't compare a human and uh, 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 an elephant or like a, a whale, even though they're all uh, mammals, it's it will be the same uh, with enough time. Uh, you know, you're already seeing a, a divergence between the audience for Bitcoin, uh, for Ethereum, for Solana. Of course, like there are people who use them all and people who use them for different purposes. And as time progresses, as more choices are made, you will see those divergences become even greater. Um, as of as, as of this uh, uh, bull run, especially since the start of year, Solana has really captured people's imagination with its, uh, you know, uh, great meme coin culture. And uh, uh, Ethereum tend to be... Uh, have have more whales like whales are not going to be chasing every meme coin um and then they have the greatest number of developers working on it and one thing about layer 2 is that i really truly believe this um is layer 2 has now become ethereum post uh you know layer 2 is just how people with um you know less capital to start with will interact with ethereum uh a little a few months down the road like they would be their, their, their transactions will be eventually included in a blob on Ethereum, but how they deal with it, especially with the help of account abstraction and the abstraction in a way of, of, of like multiple chains, they will just look at, say that like someone is a Coinbase user, they will just look at, oh, I can get something from, um, something that's on Ethereum and ERC, but uh, base chain is the cheapest and the fastest solution, I'll just use base. Uh, but obviously, ideally, these people don't even have to make that choice. Yeah. It's made for them because there is another layer on the top that's kind of making the decision, the best decision for them. Because like the next point is exactly about that layer twos, right? There's a guy, he's a friend of a, a guy who is pretty big on Twitter and who is like a, a really smart dude writing, lol, well, I do pretty much only use mainnet, talking about ETH, right? Mm. I'd rather pay the fees than deal with the brain damage of understanding the liquidity fragmentation landscape and bridging. And to be very honest, again, like, because at some point there's so many layer tools and you're doing different things and yeah. you need to bridge. Oh, obviously, like you use your MetaMask, it's not that complicated to click a button. You know, a year, two years ago, it was more complicated to add yeah. Arbitrum or Polygon. Now you just click a button, you go on a DAP and you say switch network. Yeah. But you still need to do all that stuff and, and then you need to fund your wallet with the right uh, coin, right? Yeah. To be able to pay the transaction fees. This is a problem. It's Absolutely. A this is a problem. And this is a completely valid uh, criticism because it shouldn't be on the users to be able to figure that out. It should be the u u user experience that is made for them that is that is better. And the the reassuring thing is like the best minds already working on it. Like our friends at, at, at SAFE have been like uh, SAFE, the, uh, you know, the, the, the creator SAFE, like uh, the, the previous year, not is SAFE, but they're already uh, charging away on account abstraction. And then a lot of people are working on that, like with now they call smart wallets, basically like you don't, you don't need to uh, have all those uh, technical know-how, the understanding of, of uh, the difference between multiple chains. Uh, the the the, the user interface should just give you the best choice 
um, given the time and given the the the, mm. the uh, decision you are trying to make. So one thing that's truly um, something that it's a, it's a great investment thesis as well. And so like Mental has its eco fund that's a, a catalyzed uh, capital pool of two hundred million. It's investing in a lot of great projects. It's already uh, completed its first round of ten million, asking for the second uh, uh, capital call of thirty million now. But one of the things that it's investing in is intent based um, protocols. So it does is like it doesn't like oh look at you know user oh I want to bridge to Arbitrum like oh like oh I I need to kind of move funds from this chain to that chain is what do you want to do and then we will just find the the optimal routing at this moment in time given the uh, given the 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 status of various blockchain find the best route it's like you know uh, almost like using using uh, ChatGPT or AI, try to figure out kind of what is the optimal, tra- there's there's this uh, uh, famous kind of like mathematical problem from the 17th century in, in the city of Kunisburg that is uh, now in the Russian enclave that is uh, surrounded by uh, the Baltic countries and in Poland, but it was also the the birth uh, city of Immanuel Kant, the, the German philosopher. But there's famously like seven bridges in, in, in the city and then mathematicians were trying to figure out if there's a way that you don't repeat your uh, your path, but cross all seven bridges, uh, and it was like it remained unsold for hundreds of years. And then Google came along and actually used uh, machine learning, and, and and AI decided it's impossible not to trace back. So in a way, it's just kind of you know let's find the best route uh, to to be able to do this. Uh, and it's intent based, meaning that you know user, you only need to tell um, the user interface, this is the end result I want to see. Figure out the best way for me. Oh, that rhymed, uh, to, uh, incidentally. <laughs> so the so so to that kind of comments, you you're not gonna say I don't really care. You're gonna say it's valid, yeah, but it doesn't really matter because the current state of the technology advancement and progress in crypto regarding these layer twos and even layer ones is there's. The, the 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 there's a layer on the top that should make the decision for which one is being used for the user. Yeah. And but it's not there yet. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, not there yet. It's, and therefore it's completely valid. But yeah. then it then it poses a challenge for the layer two strategy in terms of development, right? Because the way you the you know you you need to build something that's going to be used but without people knowing it, right? But currently, this layer on the top is not really there. But if you want to survive, obviously you have a big treasury, but you want adoption. So you still need to have the users. Probably the meth one is a really smart one, you know, how to get people addicted to my platform and have more TVL. But you almost need, I'd say it's almost like everything in life, which is there is the main, let's think about someone who works in a corporation, right? In a big corporation with a lot of politics. It's the same. It's. Do I think about the big vision of the company or or do I think about myself in this kind of context and make the best decision short term that will lead me to my decision my my goal long term but I need to take all the, these other things into account which are yeah not optimal for long term but that are the case right yeah so it's probably uh, one of the key challenges for most layer tools today that's a, that's a great observation I'll try to kind of like uh take it into into different steps so first I'll say like about uh, you know uh, just like people, people saying, you know, this is this is this is not great enough kind of like user experience, and they 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 would don't want to use it. I think it's just a momentary thing. It's like you know, the even the the CEO of IBM itself in the forties said uh, the the market for personal computer in the in the world is like four, but it was he was just looking at the moment. Like nowadays, like you know, uh, with with the hindsight of of eighty years advancements, everyone almost like have have a personal computer mm-hmm. in, in our phone. Mm-hmm. Right, so uh, you know uh, those challenges they will eventually be overcome, and then people will be using all those layer twos. They will be interacting with Ethereum primarily through layer two, but they wouldn't even need to notice that. Um, but then when you talk about kind of brand building, yeah, I mean you know it, it's great like you have a recognized brand, but you don't need to be a recognized brand to be successful. So you know who of us are thinking about? The utility brands that provides gas, electricity, and uh, and and different kind of utility internet to to ourselves, uh, as much as we're thinking about sort of like popular kind of fashion brands, um, and 
even to talk about fashion brands. So uh, I, I don't even remember the name, but like something, something Lutica, whatever. They are actually the, the brand that produces uh, sunglasses for almost everyone, including Ray-Ban, including like uh, uh, Chanel, all those. It's actually produced by the same company, but you barely heard the name. And they, they now are looking at interest. I heard on a podcast, they are working on smart glasses. Uh, they, they already had a, had a partnership with Ray-Ban and, and uh, Meta, with, with the Meta Star smart glasses. And they are now working on another thing is the hearing aids because one of the things that comes problem with, with hearing aids because it's so obvious. So it comes with a lot of stigma so people don't want to use it. But with, with the new like sunglasses, it would you, you wouldn't know they're wearing it. So that's a great way to, but like, have we ever heard of this brand? We never heard of this brand. So, you know, um, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a bad world if people are using uh, mental just like uh, how they are getting other electricity or sunglasses without even registering in their mind um, the mental brand. Um, so what we think is that we are building a uh, sort of like technology, technology platform on which you can build the killer apps. Um, so, you know, for example, this... Um, Account abstraction, uh, uh, ultimate routing, intent-based ultimate routing. It doesn't need to be built by us, but we will work with, uh, you know, Depths trying to build that. And uh, Mento is one of the best when it comes to kind of like enticing and, and encouraging it and supporting Depths. Like when 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 you talk about kind of talk to different ecosystem partners, they always say you know Mento gives them the best support. Mento's BD team, Mento's engineering team is just like the the level of responsiveness and and the level of support. It's it's just they've never seen any other chain and uh, we also have you know a very robust grant program we have uh, one of the single largest uh, um, uh, ecosystem fund mm -hmm. and it's denominated in stable coin unlike most of the other ecosystem fund they're in their own coin mm -hmm. so you know when we give money to others there's no uh, price pressure on mentos own uh, uh, coin and then you know um, we we just really believe that you know, we don't have to find solution for everything. We just need to create a great uh, incubator working environment for the brilliant minds who will come up with those solutions by building their depths to entice them into Mentor and then to build it on Mentor. If just one, if we're able to build all that. And then people forget about mental altogether, but people are using mental mm. every day. They they only remember the depths that are able to do all that. They they don't even remember what mental is. That's fine by Mission us. Achieved, yeah, absolutely. You talk about, you know, all these depths, right? Obviously, every layer one or every layer two needs a lot of application. That's why you that's what that's what you derive your value from. And these depths they come solving some specific issues, right? And then they work or they don't. There is also a, another specific kind of, it's not really applications, but projects. And obviously I'm referring here to meme coins. Mm -hmm. The reason why Solana is basically yeah. so successful is meme coins. Yeah. That where you have, like, actually, if I talk to, the, the meme coin thing is a really interesting one because in the beginning in crypto, you think it's dumb, right? But the more you go through cycles and the more you talk to big brains, the more you start to understand the concept and actually a lot of big brains, again, like, you know, you have the, the classic meme, yeah, the yeah. meme coins, yeah, like the, the, the right curves and left curves understand yeah. meme coins. Bell curve, yeah. It's the, it's the, the, the ones in the middle that yeah. don't understand it, I think yeah. it's dumb. If you talk to the right, uh, the, the people in the right curve, the big brains, one of the things they say is, I think meme coins are really interesting yeah. and I like them at least a lot for one reason. They don't promise anything yeah. that is bullshit, right? Which is a lot of the point of a lot of um, crypto projects, right? Obviously when you have this cycle and people want to serve the wave when it's going well, yeah. you're going to promise a lot of things and talk about narrative that you're not necessarily even in. So what's your big brain take on meme coins? Yeah, I wouldn't call myself a bit big brain, but like I think <laughs> meme coin is definitely uh, something that no one should uh, just kind of think it's stupid or uh, write off. Um, because I think if there's one thing that is even more a scarce resource than money in, in, in this market is actually uh, the amount of attention span. And meme coin is able to, because uh, 
Well, in a way, it has the best technology. It's a、mm. technology that called that's called prices go up. It's 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 this amazing technology. Like in a way, it captures people's mind more so than roll up in L two.、Uh, the the greatest、uh, um, mind concentrating technology of blockchains is, is called the、uh, prices go up. But when you actually think about it, really, like any technology, you need that option for it to really go parabolic.、Uh, mm. You know, because we live in a society. You're coming back to that.、Uh, what gives anything value is that humans value it. Like you know, why why does anything has value? It's because humans value.、It. If humans weren't here, if there's not a another species that come up to, to the society, nothing's gonna have value. Like the whole the whole thing about supply demand scarcity, it's only because humans we decided we're gonna we're gonna exchange value. We're gonna pay for it. So you know, if something is able to capture people's imagination simply by Being a meme and being being mind concentrating it has both the idea of being a meme, so like it's it's hugely transmutable,、uh, virally transmutable, and it has the the other compelling case that is price go up. It's it's a great way of you know putting that in front of people's mind, and those people who would come just as most people came to the. Play, uh, came to our space in the first place for speculation. Absolutely, I was no, about to say that Bitcoin price is when it goes up like crazy. Or in 2013 or 17, that people get attra- attracted、yeah. to the,、yeah. the space. Yeah, like with with a few autistic、uh, spectrum people aside, I have huge huge respect for those people. Ninety <laughs> nine, well over ninety nine point nine nine percent people came to this space. Their first, the first thing is speculation, and then when they look around, they find something they like. They stay.、Mm. They mellow. Uh, you know, this is this is this is kind of、like、a funnel that filters through. But everyone comes to this place. First thing first, speculation. So when you're able to have this powerful tool that is meme coin that is able to capture people's imagination and, and bring them in, it's actually great because、mm. then、uh, a portion of those people will stay for the technology. And I would even say, maybe technology is third. You have price go up first,、yeah. best technology. Yeah. Second, you have the actual memes. So not yeah, talking yeah, about the meme coins. You have the memes. Came for price go up. Okay, I got wrecked. Fine, but I stayed for the memes because I have so much fun, right? Yeah, absolutely. And if you think about it, and actually, math is exactly you. you、yeah. the, the thing you talk about is obviously you have your rate that's higher, but how do you even capture people's attention in the beginning? Yeah. Hey, let's do something about Breaking Bad, right? Yeah. Math, and you have a. Chief alchemist, right? Yes. So it's just all. It can sound so stupid, but like the the, the most uh, uh, scarce resources, attention, because pe- people people have known, literally. So how do you attract people's attention? Price goes up, and memes. Yeah. And now you put both of them together. Yeah. And you get these meme coins. Absolutely. And if you understand that, you realize it's pretty amazing. And. There is still a lot of people who are very smart in crypto who are kind of like mid-curving memes, or are starting to say, "Ah, yeah, now, okay, maybe I'll go into Doge." But now you have a lot of different flavors, and some actually, when you're deep, like in the the meme rabbit hole, I'm not talking about the the meme coins mania on Solana, right? I'm talking about a few meme coins that I would say like have certain market cap, maybe in the billions.、Mm-hmm. But like you actually start to realize it makes sense, and then you also start to realize. If you want to be very honest to yourself, most people love to gamble. So, you, and meme meme coin is basically gambling, but a new type of gambling, right? A lot of people go to play the lottery, but now you can do that online and ha- while having much more fun. And what what if meme coin are a new way for people to actually gamble,、Absolutely. but it's much more fun? Absolutely, and and like so.、Um, This is an interesting kind of because I study psychology in university. Like he actually evaluated why people gamble. It's not necessarily they always want to win. Sometimes just the adrenaline itself is is what they are after. So they they don't necessarily like. Of course, when they when you ask them, they were like, oh, we're chasing for the big win. A lot of them are, but at the end of the day, like a lot of them, like those playing playing the slot machine, maybe they just 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 want that that rush of excitement.、Um, but yeah, I, I think even even for like、um, you know. Uh, meme coin, like it's not just gambling; it's storytelling and finding a community. It sounds like all cliche, all old, 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 old timey, but when you think about kind of like how did、uh, like what what is the the thing that really sets us apart from、um, the other lives,、uh, the other creatures on, on Earth? 
uh, humans since the beginning, even what we are doing now is we huddle around a campfire, we huddle around a bonfire to tell stories. At the end of the day, when it's dark, you know, like we, we need the, the human need of, of, of warmth and, and community. Uh, and, you know, meme coin is the best way to feel invited because otherwise, oh, is that my campfire? There's other people's campfire. Meme coin is so welcoming. It's like, mm. come to our campfire. We'll tell some silly stories. You don't need to have any prior knowledge. Mm. You don't need to have any skills. You don't need to belong to this group. As long as you you decide, oh, you know, this is campfire I choose. I, I, I want to belong to this group. And it's just a, a very welcoming, you know, um, a lot of people just they, just they just want to find the group that they belong. And this is the, the innate human need to to find belonging and to to find uh, uh, their, their, their community. And then, you know, if they, of course, like money is great, but, you know, uh, it actually satisfies, uh, you know, a multiple uh, desires and needs uh, in, in yourself. So it's actually a very complex and very sophisticated uh uh, uh, thing uh, and you know don't let anyone sort of like uh, chastise uh, uh, meme coin uh, as, as dumb I love it <laughs> that's a great one actually so we have a section in this podcast where we talk about the guest favorite projects and teams mm -hmm. and you have a few projects you're really bullish on we talked about two already Eigenlayer Athena we'll go through them separately again but because we're talking about meme coin yeah and I know there is a meme coin that just launched recently. Boom. You're talking about Boom or talking? Boom, and I'm, I was talking about no, uh, on Mentor. With, uh, I'm Mentor, Puff. Oh, Puff. No. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about Boom first. Yeah. And then talk about Puff the Dragon yeah. on Mentor. So let's start with Boom. Yeah. Great stuff. Like, I, 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 like, I, I looked at them, I haven't been paying too much close attention it launched like less than 48 hours ago mm. now it's already more than 1 billion and uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's like a, a just just a, a outside of 100 top 100 coins like by the time we finish our recording if we looked at CoinGecko maybe it's already within 100 mm. yeah how do you explain that you can't explain it. It's just the power of like, so of course like because it came after sort of a whiff and, and all that people are already primed to think, you know, if if this is the first meme coin in this season, then it wouldn't be so successful so fast. But like, you know, it definitely pays to be on the on the right trend, having the momentum. And uh, you know, a lot of times like meme coins are are, are actually launched by very smart people. Mm. Uh that that that's what kind of we, we can segue to to Puff the Dragon. Yeah. Well so Puff the Dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Had, first meme coin on Mento. Uh, one of the first. It's not the first, but like, uh, like what's so special about Puff the Dragon? Except that it's very cute. Very cute, and uh, uh, it, like I think in a way, it's just kind of like it's it's already doing so much world building. It's so great, and then it takes math, and then the the, the UI UX is just great. Like it's it's it looks when you look at it, you just know a lot of work was put into it. A lot of hard tear and sweat was put into it. Um, you know, our, our own uh, uh, beloved, uh, esteemed uh, colleague, uh, uh, Chief Alchemist, uh, Jordi Alexander is, 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 is involved in it. Absolutely. Uh, of course, yeah. like uh, in his personal capacity and, and there's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a completely, completely uh, uh, community run meme coin. But when you look at the level of attention, the level, the level of uh, pre preparation and uh, uh, thought, deliberation put into it, it just is is really a, a, almost like a work of art, and they have a lot of like interesting. Uh, so that currently it's chapter one is a lot of like things being cooked. Um, yeah, so like I I know more than I can talk about, and uh, I'm I'm not personally involved in the in the development of it. But when I look at like all the partnerships and all the next chapters they have planned, uh, it just can't help but be uh, super bullish about it. Because uh, again, coming back to what I said uh, a while ago, it's like there's nothing as as infectious and, 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 and magnetic than uh, dedicated people, passionate people at work. Do you think that's the most important thing for a meme coin to be su successful? Because if you look at, for example, Whiff, right? It's a cute dog with a hat. It's, and that's one of the, I mean, obviously then you have like some mega influencers that are, I mean, I even chipped in for the, the Las Vegas sphere because yeah. I'm also a holder and I was like, man, this makes so much sense. And it's going to be fun just to have like the freaking dog with the hat on the sphere, but there's much less work put, let's say there's a lot of BD and marketing yeah, yeah. work put Absolutely. on that, but much less on the entire concept. Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, something doesn't need to start fully. Like, so like a baby doesn't need to come out of the womb fully. Uh, I, I, I just like to throw out tangents so much. So like, if you go to like, look at so those European museums, you would see like those medieval paintings, all the babies down there so ugly. Do you know why? Because most of them are actually depicting Jesus and they're trying to depict Jesus as fully formed, complete. So because medieval paintings, they're not for aesthetics, they're for storytelling because back then most people are illiterate. So all the arts, they were meant for churches and they were trying to tell the story. They're trying to teach morals. So, you know, a baby, like this is a long way of saying it doesn't have to come out fully formed. We love uh, Renaissance babies who are cute and uh, Cheryl been like a lot more. Uh, it may have started as a silly idea, like, oh, it's dog and hat, oh, it's cool. But uh, the success it has had since you cannot just chalk it off mm. or to just a bunch of silly dudes came out with silly idea. Mm. Anything that's successful, like th- we always like to, you know, chalk our success to 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 grit and, and to to inventiveness and other people's success to to uh, to to luck. To look, yeah. Luck is hugely important, but I think any success there is a lot of hard work and grit and stick to itness that's involved. And I think for for something that's more than a flash in a pen, something that is a, a a success that will that will that will sustain and last. Um, you you basically see this curve of um, of silly inventiveness start to diminish in its importance and grit and stick to this uh, grow in importance uh, throughout the time axis. Absolutely. So there's these two other protocols that I mean we talked about before already, but let's go one by one and again here. Let's imagine that you're talking to your mother, right? Mm. The first one is eigenlayer. So first explain me what eigenlayer is, if you had to explain it to your mother, and then explain me why you're so bullish on eigenlayer. Right. Uh, so eigenlayer, like I actually said a little bit before, it's like, you know, uh, uh, on-demand liquidity and security. Uh, it's like on, uh, it's liquidity and security uh, for blockchain, like uh, uh, Uber, is on demand uh, ride sharing uh, for 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 mobility. Um, so, what 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 is kind of one of the biggest uh, uh, like initial challenge for a lot of uh, um, project owners founders is that uh, when they try to build something new, uh, they need to bootstrap liquidity, bootstrap security, and they don't have that. Uh, what Eigenlayer allows it to do is like, you know, the, the the joke is like new economy, Uber has no cars, Airbnb has 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 no no mm-hmm. rooms and so on and so forth. Uh, a lot of those founders, they have a brilliant idea, but they don't have the the, the entire market cap of Ethereum at their back for liquidity and security. Eigenlayer allows you to do that. So you can start from day one. You can, if you build an Eigenlayer, you're able to basically have those uh, ETH stakers to restake on your protocol and then supply you with the security and liquidity uh, the way, you know, Ethereum is is already built. Gives you the tap into the greatest uh, um, liquidity and security of any smart contract platform in the world. Why is this so important for the space? And why was this not invented before? That that the second question is is I, I don't I don't even know like but like a lot of times like when you have when when you when you have sort of like some something of, of this caliber, you just think, oh you know this is such a simple idea. It's such like, but a lot of it is like people can have ideas. They it, it, they falter as execution and 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 uh, grit and stick to it. And this, um, I think, why is this so powerful? Is because now you really open the door for the Crimean explosion. Like now, the 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 threshold for um, someone coming up a great idea and execute it becomes so much lower because before like you know someone someone who's building a new layer one they need to figure out you know how do I not get 51% attacked mm. nowadays like you know you can just build an icon layer and then you know uh, even if you, yeah. you don't have any startup capital you can do it you're, you're going to be as secure as Ethereum it's essentially the same way as uh, I mean the, the internet evolved yep. everything became much easier and then you you started to have platforms that enable you, it's less, let's less a problem of security. I mean, you could say the cloud, for example, you have a few companies running the the cloud, and then you don't really have to worry too much about security. I mean, obviously, this could be a rabbit hole on its own, right? But mm-hmm. hey, I can build my own stuff and kind of renting cloud up from from out there, or just building a business or a startup. Like I can just the internet lowered the cost massively yeah. because of the 
evolution in time, right? Here it's kind of the same in terms of security and liquidity. That's made made easier, right? Yeah, it, it basically it abstracts away two of the uh, greatest kind of like uh, uh, block of, of, of mm -hmm. like uh, like writer's block, starter's block, like uh, and they allow the, uh, the the project developer to focus on the problem that they're trying to solve instead of like the, the problems they need to address before they can mm, present their solution. Absolutely. You're also hyper bullish on Athena. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think you're the only one. Yes. What's Athena, if you had to explain it to your mother? And why are you and the pretty much the entire space so excited on what Athena is building? It's a, it's a synthetic dollar built with um, basically uh, positions on, on centralized exchanges. The way it works is this was a, an idea that Arthur Hayes, uh, uh, co-founder of, uh, of BitMEX, had several years ago. He was trying to do it on Bitcoin, but Athena is doing it on Ethereum, is that uh, most of the people, like vast majority of the people in the crypto space actually still on centralized exchanges and centralized exchanges are actually far more powerful. Like we love all the innovation in decentralized space, but we cannot, uh, uh, you know, not admit that centralized exchanges, they have the, the lion's share of, of, of basically 90% of liquidity that goes through the space, goes through centralized exchanges. And there's actually money to be made there because what are some of the like biggest players in the space, actually market makers, and investors and how they make money is to be, you know, uh, market making on centralized exchanges earning a funding rate. Mm. So um, especially for futures, uh, for, for perpetual contracts, in order to kind of like have the price uh, anchored to the spot price, they apply this thing called funding rate every eight hours. Uh, if the price is above uh, the spot, you would basically have uh, people who are long paying, people who are short and then Vice versa, if the price is lower, so so it's basically to make it simple. It's an because a lot of people love leverage, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it, you can make much more if you're right. Obviously, you can lose much more if you're wrong. Mm -hmm. If the price of Bitcoin goes up or any altcoin that has perps, right? People we anticipate that it's going to go up more on average. Yeah. Therefore, they're going to long more. Yeah. But at some point, because long and short is a market in itself. Yep. You need to have a mechanism that f incentivizes not everyone to be long, right? Yep. That's the funding fee. To keep it equal. To make it very simple, right? Yep. That's the funding fee. Yep. And so, but obviously a lot of traders or retail traders don't necessarily know that. Let's say like the, the, the normies, yep. right? Or don't care because think that the price is still gonna go up. Yeah. But then you have some other people who are very smart, who come and say, actually, I don't really care whether the price goes up yeah. or down. I just want to pocket the difference on the funding fees. And during a bull market, everyone is long, let's say to make it simple. Most people are very long, therefore the funding fees are very high and pay the people who short very well. Yeah. And that's the mechanism yes. underlying Athena, right? Yeah. Stablecoin. So they're able to give people like almost, uh, uh, I think like around 20% APY by holding their synthetic dollar USDE while making millions every day. And so, that, that, that also just tells you how much centralized exchanges actually make. Yeah. That yeah. they're able to afford like sponsorships like Rebel. Just like the, the <laughs> amount of money centralized exchanges make is just astounding. And market makers too. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I mean, I had a bunch of CEOs, founders from uh, Central Exchange. I had the, also the two co-founders of the, you know, GSR and the uh, Wintermute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I kind of know about like the, let's say, potential of, but I think a lot of people still don't understand that, how crazy the money is in those specific uh, yeah. companies, basically, verticals, whereas... For yeah. a lot of other people in crypto, it's much harder to make money. A lot of other, this, I mean, this is like kind of diverting, but if you think about how, what are the best ways to make money in crypto today? Market making, exchanges, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have these projects that are sitting on a huge treasury and generate yield from that treasury and then can fund yeah. their operations, right? But it's still very hard for other kind of projects to make a lot of money, especially in the long term. 
Yeah, I mean, since the beginning of time, when you have a lot to start with, like even if you're just making penny on a dollar for <laughs> what you're holding, like it, uh, yeah. if you start up crypto uh, capital is, is huge. It's like, you know, uh, the Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize is still, you know, after more than like almost 200 years, still giving all those prize monies a million dollar for like a win of chemistry <laughs> just from this uh, inventor like he, his savings from all those years ago and they're not touching the 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 principle they're just giving the interest yeah. so you know what in, in, in this sense if you know is doing something similar to what mental does is like you know we are just taking the interest we are earning to to feed to fund development athena like is it building something that is uh truly groundbreaking. I mean, in a sense that this product itself is, yeah. but it's the concept behind it, not necessarily. It's just, we have a lot of money that we can throw around and just the money that that's grown from that large capital is enough to make everyone happy. So what's the bet there? Obviously you're going to take the opportunity of the bull run, but what's the bet in a, in a bear market? Can you make the funding fees on the other side? Yeah. By being long when everyone is short, I mean, yeah. probably there's gonna be much fewer people who are short because the retail people are not gonna short, right? But or much less, I'd say. But or saying, hey, we have accumulated so much money that no problem doing a bear market. We can either still give some incentives, like you guys are doing at Mental on yeah. uh, on ETH or Meth, or just say, hey, like we can even give a portion of the treasury away because or, and build other things, obviously, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, crypto people are looking at much shorter terms. I think I think it's very good to look at long term, and and we are totally for that. Sorry for that. No, no, but but I think you know they obviously have a, have a plan. But I think as of as of this moment, uh, the launch is very very opportune because we're just at the start of a bull market. So in a way, maybe they they can make so much in this bull market that that's enough to sustain them for several bear yeah, markets. Yeah, absolutely. What's intelligence to you? I asked you yesterday, what's your IQ, right? Yeah. You said, ah, you don't know, you don't want to say, or you don't care. But then you started to question, what is intelligence? Right. I mean, this is a multi-layered question. So like, when people talk about IQ, I think like one, one of the things that most of us have in some, some, some way taken an IQ test, but most of it is actually kind of pattern recognition and then problem solving. I don't think that's the full of intelligence. Kind of, like I was, I think yesterday I was, I was throwing out uh, Mozart and, and Bach yeah. as examples. And the Dolphins. Yeah. Uh, they, they are famously, both of them are able to play a piece of music after hearing it just once and they're able to play the entire thing perfectly. And this is something that, you know, someone who, because I like Rome, uh, uh, Cicero, like, Cicero basically is 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 the guy who 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 is most famous for for like the the, the way like Latin languages is is coded established is mainly contributable to him like modern English a lot like thanks to Shakespeare Shakespeare invented more than two thousand words including eyeball apparently we didn't have the word eyeball before Shakespeare and then Dante was hugely responsible for like the modern language of Italian because he just had the, the Tuscan um um uh the dialect and people wrote in, in Latin back then and not a lot of them actually wrote in, in dialects but uh, um, you know in intelligence like you know they can be very different and, and if we're only measuring like problem solving skills and pattern recognition they're very important skills but we're not really capturing the full spectrum of uh, what people are able to do and then another thing that I said I was like uh, you know we, we have heard dolphins who are able to master thousands of human <laughs> words but not a, a single human who are able to most, master multiple dolphin words if we're measuring like intelligence in that way aren't dolphins more smart <laughs> smarter than humans uh, I think another thing is like we just decided the things like even even when we're measuring uh, intelligence of other animals like are they able to recognize themselves in a mirror um are, are they able to uh, you know understand human words are they able to do pattern recognition some some gorillas can even memorize um you know uh places on a screen better than humans but like what we are testing them is for you know human uh tasks uh i think a true measure of intelligence should be like how a species is able to adapt to the environment the best so when we are testing for like uh, you know, animals it should be like what benefits them in their natural habitat instead of like uh, the task that human can perform. Um, but also just like, you know, when we talk about, oh, you know, um, people like to say, oh, you know, uh, humans are uh, intelligent species or like, you know, why on, why on that? Like there must be other, there mustn't be other intelligent species in the universe because like, why, why haven't they visited us? Uh, so one thing is, it's just like hugely uh, assumption, uh, 
assumptions of us to to say um, we are the only intelligent species because we define the intelligence. It's like a VC sort of like investing. Like when we talk when we were at this dinner the other day, is like VC going to every next round round A round B, investing in the same company, leading the same VC, they're marking their own work. Mm. In a sense, it's like um, you know we just decided what we are able to do is intelligence. Why is it? Why is that true? Is you know like. Um, um, alien species, and I, 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 I truly believe space aliens exist. Uh, it doesn't even require belief. It's, it's, it's a matter of fact. Just there are the trillions of stars in in the universe. And when people ask, oh, you know, if they exist, why haven't they visited us? Is because like you know, even if they don't even even need to be that that smart, like to be able to traverse the the, the space time, the vast uh, uh, ness of space time, because the 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 the, the farthest man human made object hasn't even left the the, the sun's uh, 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 gravitational well to be like to, to go to the next closest star it, it it's four light years it takes like hundreds of uh, uh, thousands of years for the fast uh, fastest human made object to travel there if a alien species is able to travel multiple light years to visit us they will be so far advanced mm. as nothing that we have is of interest to them like like just think, like when was the last time we stopped to have a conversation with ants? Because like you think, oh, ants are so primitive. Like we are only one point eight percent smarter than 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 gorillas in terms of the 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 the, the difference in 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 DNA. And ants not that different. Uh, if it, just imagine there's an alien species who are one point eight percent smarter than us, the way we are one point eight percent smarter than gorillas. What are they able to achieve? Everything we do will be not of interest to them. Like. Um, yeah, so like one thing like people people often talk about, you know, when, like when aliens come to us, that like one thing they will want is Bitcoin. Uh, they would have figured that out. Like one thing that's actually uh, not bullish for for crypto is like when we actually <laughs> encounter alien species, like nothing that we can offer will be of interest mm. to them. Not even cryptocurrency, even though maybe this is the the, the most supreme form of of of, of a currency and me uh, method of exchange we have created. But like you know. There's actually so much abundance in the universe. Like, you know, gold may be rare, but gold is actually not rare on earth, but gold, the rarest thing is actually ruby in terms of gemstones. Uh, but like everything might be rare, but when you look at the, the vastness of the space, like nothing is rare. So I'm obviously not going to ask you the, I mean, as a wrap up for this podcast, I'm obviously not going to ask you the... Sorry for going on so many tangents. The kind of, no, the kind of logical question where a lot of people would ask you, so do you believe there is a life somewhere else in the universe? Obviously there is, right? Yeah. Like it's mathematically almost impossible, or let's say it's mathematically impossible that there is no life somewhere else. Mm -hmm. My question would be, how many? How many other planets or, or um, stars, or maybe even things that we can't see because we have, you know, yeah. we have our senses. Yeah. yeah. Like how many others kind of civilizations exist? Yeah, it's it's going to be innumerable. So like the observable universe is about <laughs> 198 and 192 like thousands of uh, of, uh, of of light years across, and then even just beyond that because like light hasn't traveled far enough since the the, the Big Bang to, to reach us, uh, and and they may never reach us because the universe is expanding faster than than light can reach us. Um, but even just in our own backyard, in like uh, uh, moons of uh, of Jupiter and and uh, and uh, uh, Saturn, you have Enceladus that has uh, uh, like uh, warm plumes underneath its icy shell. You have water there. You you may have water. You may have water on Europa, which is another uh, 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 moon of of Jupiter. Europa is is what uh, Europe, the continent, was named after because Europa was a, was a princess of Phoenicia, modern day Lebanon, Levant. It was abducted by Zeus, carried uh, on Zeus's back in in the form of a bull uh, to to Crete. So Crete was actually like the the original name of Europa. It's like uh, Asia. Now we think of Asia. We think of uh, you know uh, East Asia, Singapore. Asia originally meant. Uh, this Roman province on the west coast of uh, Turkey, uh, modern day Turkey, Anatolia, and like Africa used to just mean Tunis. That's where uh, the old uh, Carthage is. But um, um, when we find, if we find life on Europa, what are we gonna call them? We have to call them Europeans. 
Um, sorry, that's not a joke that kind of <laughs> I really clicked with this audience. But uh, you know, like there, like there, there, there might be life in our own mm. backyard. Like the reason, like it's, it's like to say, oh, just because we haven't seen seen aliens, they must not. Uh, exist is like to take this glass and go to the go to the East Coast Park, go to the beach, scoop up water into this, and see. Oh, there's no fish in there. Mm. There must be fish. There mustn't be fish in the entire ocean. Yeah. Yeah, but when we meet space aliens, like there's no even point to resist or anything. It's just like you know we submit to because like if they're able to have such technology advancements to to travel all the way here. Then there's nothing that we can do to resist them or like to like like basically they can have their pick. <laughs> Man, the next podcast is gonna be about <laughs> that aliens, excellent astrology, astronomy. I'll be sure to watch. That. That's gonna be no. I, I mean the next one with you. Oh, okay, <laughs> the next one with you, right? Because it could probably be another five hour conversation. <laughs> What's your biggest prediction for next twelve months? Next twelve months, full bull run. Like we're before Bitcoin halving and we already hit multiple uh, all time highs. It's yeah. Uh, like if 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 history rhymes, like a lot of times it rhymes. Um, you know, uh, just how the price performs after halving as as compared to the price at halving. Uh, we are looking at Bitcoin at least doubling, if if not like even higher, two x, three x of its current price. So yeah, very excited about the bull run. That we are already in. Absolutely amazing! Thank you so much for doing this, man.、Thanks. That was a hell of a conversation. Proud to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs>